On the federal level, we've got a disaster. Today, Dan Pfeiffer, speaking for the White House, basically said, we'll take any bill, any bill at all. <laughs> and uh, we just want to get something through. So that lead me, led me to believe that, oh my God, they might even get rid of background checks. It, it, it's 91 percent popularity for background checks in the country, 87 percent of Republicans even support it, and they can't get that through. How pathetic. But luckily, here comes Team Coco to the rescue. So who are those guys? Well, it's Colorado and Connecticut, and they have passed the two toughest set of uh, gun control laws in the country. All of a sudden, I'm a believer in states' rights. Now, of course, by the way, unlike the hypocritical right wing, I've always maintained the states' rights depends. Now, if you're doing experimentation at the state level that does not take away fundamental rights, absolutely, of course you should do experimentation as part of the genius of the founding fathers. Now, you can't take people's fundamental rights away. You can't say, all right, well, this is Connecticut, so I'd like to, you know, say that Chinese people uh, don't have constitutional rights anymore. Of course you can't do that. Now, I know that some gun rights advocates will say, well, the Second Amendment is a fundamental right. But there's never been an argument made that you can't regulate it in any way, shape, or form. Even the First Amendment, which is a fundamental right, has some regulations. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. So experimenting at the state level with incredibly lax gun control laws and, a, and strict gun control laws makes sense. And by the way, Montana and New York should have different gun laws. That makes sense to me. So what has uh, Connecticut done? Well, they've literally now passed the toughest gun control law in the whole country. Now it makes sense, remember, it's about 100 days after Sandy Hook in Connecticut. So what are the provisions here? Well, they require background checks for nearly all private gun sales. They ban the sale of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. And uh, they expand the state's assault weapons ban to include scores of new gun models. This is tougher than anything even proposed at the national level. And then it gets even better, in my opinion. New registration requirements for those already who already own high-capacity magazines. That's the stuff that conservatives flip out over. They're going to register our guns. In this case, they're even registering your bullets. Uh, and it creates the nation's first dangerous weapon offender registry. Now look, that's people uh, you know, that go on that registry. Again, the conservatives flip out over that. But all it's doing is tracking the weaponry that might do damage and people who might do damage uh, and that are dangerous. And they allocate also $15 million for more school safety and mental health monitoring programs. Now, I like this again as an experiment. One, I agree with it. I think those are the right laws. I know a lot of you uh, will agree and a lot of you will definitely disagree with it. But let's let it keep going, and you, which is going to just passed overwhelmingly in both the House and the Senate and then the governor immediately signed it into law. And what you're going to find out two years from now, five years from now, hopefully ten years from now, is that the government of Connecticut didn't lose their mind and immediately become fascist Maoist and take away all your rights and then kill you all and force you into hobbit homes. No, what they're going to use the registry for is to make sure that dangerous people don't get the weapons and if they, they use them in crimes, well, we can track it back to those folks. That's not a bad thing. That helps protect your families. They're not going to take away your guns, but in terms of assault weapons and high capacity magazines, well look, the, the shooter in Sandy Hook fired 155 rounds in an incredibly short period of time and he had high capacity magazines and assault weapons. So Connecticut does want to take that away to protect kids. And you know you don't need 155 rounds, even if you're the worst hunter in the world, whether you're hunting deer or protecting your home. So. Uh, I, I'm very much in favor of what they did. I also agree with Colorado. Colorado was not as stringent, but they also did background checks for private and online gun sales. They also banned ammunition magazines that hold more than 15 rounds in their case, and they uh, require buyers to pay fees for background checks. I think it's very reasonable. Maryland also passed some tough laws. Now let's see what works better. Now we already have some evidence on gun control states versus you know, laxer gun control states, and we already see that there's less violence, less homicides, less, certainly less homicides by guns you know, in those states. But if you know, the experiment goes further, hey, who knows, maybe the gun advocates are right and all of a sudden Connecticut turns into a mess and my God, it's much more violent and more people get killed in Connecticut than other places. Then you would be right and that would be an interesting data point, wouldn't it? So trust in the founding fathers, let's go forward on these state experiments 
and see how it turns out. So it's a good day in America that at least some people, in my opinion, have sense in the country, and Connecticut has done the right thing here, and that of course the national politicians have absolutely no interest in doing and no capacity to do.